Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God, 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 I shall come to the Mosa Babasa. We may seek Yasha. Shadama seek Yamama San. Yes, God. 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 Shaba Sabasi. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, Shamama Basa. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Shanana Basa. Roba Saka. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear this. I hear thee. I hear thee, God. I hear thee. I hear thee. I hear thee. I hear thee, God. I hear thee. Yes, God. I hear thee. I hear thee. I hear thee, Lord. I hear thee. I hear thee. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I hear thee. I hear thee. Yes, Lord. I hear you. 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 Yes, God. I hear you. I hear you, Lord. I hear you, Lord. Good morning. Good morning to each and every one of you. The Lord has petitioned me to pray this morning. And yes, this is Car Chronicles. And we are going to pray this morning because the Lord wants me to pray. Most of you have to understand that the word of God speaks about Daniel. It speaks about Daniel and Daniel was praying for 21 days. And it felt like Daniel's prayers were being hindered. And most of you who are under the sound of this audible voice this morning, you're at a place of uncertainty because the very thing that you have been praying about has gone unanswered. And most of you who are crying, and if you feel this way, doing this, I'm able to see the comments. What I need you to do is take the very thing that you have been praying about and just put the word of that thing in the comment section. Now you have to understand as a prophet, I hear God. Good morning, Michelle. I hear God and he has given me directive this morning. And most people, if you don't believe that prophets are real, then maybe you need to connect yourself to a ministry where there is fruit. 
Maybe you need to connect yourself to the email when God has given words that he wants me to share that I will not say over Facebook media. But you will see that those words are being manifested and still will be manifested. I need you to take the very thing that you've been praying about and I need you to put it in the comment section. For instance, if it's a child, say child. If it's a financial thing, say finances. If it is something concerning marriage, do that. Kathy, you got it. Iris, you got it. Iris, you ain't going to lose nothing. Hear me. You have to understand Dottie is crying right now. Dottie, you're crying, but you're not just crying for yourself. Dottie, you're crying for your husband. You have to understand that anything that you have a concern out, God said, I have a need to meet it. And I've already have a concern for it. And so everyone who was under the sound of my voice, that's right. Go to do that. Yes, Golda. I've got to tell you that. Yes, you have to put it on the market. Yes, you have to do that. And sometimes when you put things up the comment section, I will give you what God tells me to give you prophetically. If this is what he wants me to say for you, please understand that most of us who are right now, you're crying over things that God has already confirmed you to do, but your flesh is in the way and won't let God have his way. Some things that you're crying about, you have a connection to, but God said, suppose you connect yourself to me and I know the beginning and the end of a thing, but you did it out of pure desire. And God says that was your desire. Desire, not mine. Suppose God tells you that the very desire that you desire is not his will at all. And so when he says that I will give you the desires of your heart, it means the very thing that you want is not what you need at all. That God says I will supply the need according to the riches and glory. And since your desire has not become the will of God and your desire is not what God says you need, he said in this season, I'm going to introduce you to it and when you get out of your flesh and accept my will, you know that that will was good, perfect, and it is acceptable. The acceptable will of God sometimes is hard to receive. It's because your flesh is in the way of God presenting it to you. And God says, I'm presenting something to you. And in order for me to present it to you, I've got to go to the crevices of your heart and the chambers of your heart where you can't see. And sometimes it ain't well because it feels like hell. But God is saying, I'm presenting something to you and I need your flesh out of the way. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pray that your flesh get out the way so God can have his way because you too busy having yours. And so when God began to tell me to pray concerning this, he said to me, sometimes first Peter three and seven is a fact. And see, people are saying, well, what is she saying? First Peter three talks about husband dwell with your wives according to knowledge. It also says that respect her as unto the weaker vessel, uh huh. Respect her as the weaker vessel, and he says, when you do this, he says your prayers won't be hindered. And sometimes a husband may be praying, and he can't get his prayers answered because his prayers are hindered because he's not respecting his wife, like like God said, as the weaker vessel. And then the wife's prayers can't be hindered because of Matthew six nine and thirteen. And so, someone please put it up there where you're putting up your prayer request. First Peter three and seven is your problem in your household because when first Peter three and seven is present, Matthew six and 19 follows through. Matthews understand. He says this, that God will forgive. And sometimes the problem is, is that you don't forgive your husband for what he did and not even the spouse. Uh, please, now, now I need you to hear this. You can't forgive yourself. You cannot forgive the person that offended you. You can't forgive the alt. And so not only does Matthew 6 and 9 and 13 applies to those that are in the household with a spouse, it applies to anyone that does not want to forgive. It says, forgive your brother and sister their transgressions or the God in heaven won't forgive you. And so there's a whole lot of forgiveness and unforgiveness that needs to be had and going around. And so before I pray, let's get an understanding. The Bible says, with all thy getting, get an understanding. It says that for 21 days, Daniel's prayers were being hindered. And God began to tell me, he began to tell me, what about their prayers not being heard? 
It may not be the principalities at all. Suppose their prayers are being hindered because of themselves. You can hold up your own prayers. You can hold back your own prayers. And the devil ain't got nothing to do with it. You can hold back your own prayers. And you don't understand it's that of your own household, God says, that will come against you. You can understand something. You can hold back your prayers by not forgiving yourself. You can hold back your own prayers. The Bible says, so your prayers be not hindered. Husband, you need to go and forgive your wife. Wives, you need to go and forgive your, your, your husband. Whatever it is, you hold your own prayers back because of your own free will and so now that we've got the understanding and people are crying ATL Georgia hear me I need you to understand I'm praying for your sons I'm praying for your daughters most of you hear me every morning and you don't understand that God is doing some things in this nation most of you don't even understand what I go through but I yield to the only man that can fix it. And so instead of getting angry with God, because you feel he forgot about you, I need all the spiritual spoiled brats to fall in line. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I call on you El Shaddai. And God, I can stand in the gap for everyone that has a concern in the comment section because, God, I say this with all honesty. My heart is pure. I am like Paul, Father. I am a slave, my husband and I. Apostle Fred D. Gooden with his amazing ministry. We are considered slaves to the Most High. God, we thank you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, because you have given us the spirit of Moses. You have given us this season to lead your people. You have given us the season, Lord God, to lead the nation as husband and wife. And so, God, before I utter another word, I pray for my own husband. I come against every backlash and every demonic force in the name of Jesus. I come against, oh God, everything that tries to come against the ministry. God, in the name of Jesus, every profile picture that is false and fake, all the individual that tries to come with hate to come against this ministry, God. Sheba I petition Michael, the archangel of war, to come down from the throne, Lord God, in which he kneels before you and cries, Holy God, I'm not sure, because the heart of your servant girl is pure, God, and I live the life in which people see. I petition you, God, with the commandment of grace. I petition you, God, with the commandment of obedience. And God, I put my own sacrifice. I put my own sacrifice call my life up on the altar God I put my own sacrifice call my seed on the offering God I put my obedience God despite how I feel on the altar God and so God because I have become that sacrifice that is holy and acceptable I am doing the reasonable servant as your servant and I ask that Michael the archangel of war will come down with his sword and sever the snake Cut the head off the serpent God uh, that is slithering and slanderous uh, and that dual talking demon. Uh, God, uh, cut it, God, in the name of Jesus. Uh, slice his belly wide and loud. Uh, God, uh, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Uh, and God, since I stand in the gap, God, uh, not just for my husband and our family and our children, uh, I stand in the gap for the nation. Uh, I stand in the gap for the common section. Uh, God, I go before thee, God, uh, with a pure heart, God. Uh, head out of a go shy. Uh, God, with the spirit of righteousness, God, uh, not self righteousness, God. Uh, humbly, I ask, oh God, uh, that every circumstance and every situation, uh, God, you hear it. Uh, God, the prayers are hindered uh, because of somebody somewhere uh, is going around not forgiving. Uh, someone somewhere uh, don't forgive themselves. Uh, someone somewhere, God, uh, has an art 
oh God, uh, somewhere somebody, uh, hey, she uh, is fighting with a sibling, uh, fighting with a spouse. Uh, I got the house is divided. Hey, my son. God, I stand at the gap. Uh, and God, this is where you say, uh, if you are sick, uh, call for the elders of the church. Uh, God, I can do that. Uh, I stand as the apostle God uh, and the prophet of the nation God uh, with a pure heart God. Uh, and they say, God, the inbox is full. Uh, and they say, God, the common section speaks. Uh, and they say the emails are coming and the phone calls are ringing uh, because they're calling God uh, for the effectual fervent prayers of the righteous uh, that shall avail the much. Uh, the prayers of the righteous uh, shall not prevail unless uh, they go to you wholehearted and pure. Uh, the prayers of the righteous uh, shall not avail much uh, if they're living a life of debauchery. Uh, the prayers of the righteous uh, shall not avail much uh, if they're living a life God secretly. Uh, for Lord God, what they see uh, is purity, God. Uh, what they see, God, uh, is a prophet and a servant. Uh, my husband and I, uh, we live the life we preach uh, and preach the life we live. Uh, and so they call us God. Uh, and we take the prayers of the righteous uh, and we put it on the altar. Uh, we put the finances, God, uh, of the common section in the altar. Uh, we put, oh God, uh, the prayers of the house divided, uh, whether it be the children or the husband. Uh, we put it on the altar, God. Uh, Rabbi Shekasah. Uh, we take the health of those uh, that are in the common section, God, uh, and we put it on the altar, God. And uh, we take mental illness, God, uh, and we put it on the altar, God. Uh, Rabbi Shekasah. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we take the abuser uh, and put him on the altar. Uh, we take the person uh, that is being abused uh, and we put it on the altar. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, uh, we take cancer uh, during this time, God, uh, of cancer awareness uh, and we put it on the altar. Uh, we take domestic violence uh, in this season of domestic violence uh, awareness, God, uh, and we put it on the altar. Uh, God, just as sure uh, as you told the servant girl uh, that the earthquake shall come. Uh, we saw it, God. Uh, as we say, oh God, uh, you said put it in the email. Uh, we see it, oh God. Uh, so God, because uh, I have become your slave, uh, I don't move unless you say move. Uh, I don't speak unless you tell me to. Uh, God, right now, uh, as your servant girl, uh, I put every situation uh, that's in the comment section uh, on the altar, God. Uh, God, in the name of Jesus, this nation, God. Yes, God. Father God, in the name of Jesus. You are showing me, God, in the name of Jesus. As I pray for 2,200 people, the Holy Spirit is showing me a very large shepherd's staff. He is showing me a very large shepherd's staff. And as I pray for you, he is showing me a stall. If most of you don't know what a stall is, this stall is a sheep stall. It is a sheep stall that holds millions of sheep. It is a gate. It is so wide and large. If Fred were here and I explained it because he's a carpenter, he would explain the square footage. And God is showing me this large stall. And in this stall, it is the wounded sheep, not just of the church, but he said it is the wounded sheep of the world. God said that it is the wounded sheep of the world. And he said in this season, he is raising up leaders that would take the staff of the shepherd and gather them in the purpose of the shepherd's staff. Understand what God is saying. The shepherd's staff has a hook on it specifically to grab. And God is saying he is sending leaders to grab the sheep that life wounded. Mm -hmm. He said, I am sending the leaders to grab the wounded sheep of the world. 
Mm -hmm. He said, because it is the gathering season for the wounded. Mm -hmm. It is the gathering season of the lost because life got you there. Ah, my mama, ah. He said in every comment section, you're going to see that he will gather individuals around you uh -huh, that will help you during this time of need. Mm -hmm. He said he is going to send people from the north, the east, the west, and the south. Mm -hmm. That things are going to happen to you huh, that are not going to make sense. He said the leaders shall lead differently. Uh -huh. But he said the reward shall be the same. Ah, he said these leaders shall lead differently. Uh -huh. But the reward shall remain the same. In this season, please do not look upon people around you as strange because God said they're leaders. Please don't look upon people, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. He's saying huh, that that are different from what you have been accustomed in your spirit to see as a leader. Uh -huh. But he said in this season, they're going to be different. Uh -huh. Some leaders he have to send to hurt uh, because you did not recognize the fruits of the spirit. Uh, meaning this, you're not going to like what I'm going to say. Uh, but somebody got duped because they look like a leader. Uh, what am I saying? Leadership does not necessarily mean symbolically in the church. Uh, because sometimes what people do, you will run to what looks familiar. And God said in this season, when you need help, it's going to look unfamiliar, but it's going to have the same impact. Understand it's going to look like a raggedy mortgage company, but God said the power behind it shall be great. God said, please don't frown in this season upon the unusualness of leadership. Most of you don't understand. Some people understand the sound of my voice won't get this. Some of you are in and I'm also calling it see. Some of you are in houses of leaders and God says, please don't let leaders infiltrate your decision making to leave. But God said he's going to soften the heart of someone that will take you in. Most of you, you have to understand you have been contaminated by leadership. Hear me. What leader are you referring to? My husband and I are leaders, but the fruit bears witness. But some of you on your job, the leadership has contaminated you and you're messing up. And God said what he's got to do is not remove the leader, but remove you. And you are going to be removed from a position in employment. But God said, trust me, because you're not with the right leadership. I've got to now take you to a place that looks a little strange to put you in a promotion. I got what you can lead them. You've got to understand what is happening now. God is saying to me, I'm pouring out Moses' spirit. What do you say, woman of God? In this season, God is pouring out the spirit of Moses in leadership. It simply means promotion comes from on high. Jasmine, get ready. Hear me because your name came to me. God says, I am pouring out the spirit of Moses all over the land because the leadership that look normal ain't doing the job but God said what I'm going to do in this season I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh not just your sons and daughters shall prophesy he said what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the spirit of Moses in leadership it simply means that they ain't going to be able to understand how you got here they're not going to be able to understand you mean to tell me huh, that this promotion was under my nose all along? Huh? Yes, it was. Huh? Because it looked like something huh, that you said it was. Huh? But God says, no, huh? I'm sitting my spirit called Moses. Huh? And it's going to come out of thin air. Huh? You don't understand because Moses huh, walked with leadership. Huh? He talked with leadership. Huh? It looked like leadership. Huh? But it wasn't leadership at all. Huh? Not under the 
be that regime. And God said the spirit of Moses will operate in a place where it's hated. The spirit of Moses' leadership will be connected to stuff for a period of time. And then it's got to leave. And then what God says what the spirit of Moses does. It finds itself leading the place in which denied him. And God said there is where you find him. You are in a position where you're not respected. You ain't respected in your house. You ain't respected in your church. You ain't respected nowhere. But God said in this season, the spirit of Moses will separate itself from what looks like a promotion, but it's not. It's going to separate itself that you look like your friends, but you're not. But God said the spirit of Moses understands its assignment. And Moses, the word of God even said that he found himself with Jethro, high priest of Midian, with the Midianites preparing himself to lead the people who denied him. And even God has shown me that when he pulls the shepherd's staff and the leaders that get you, they're going to get you wounded. They're going to get you broken. They're going to get you beat. They're going to get you enslaved. They're going to get you sick. They're going to get you because they realize it's not about me. As my friend Bishop Gilead said, it's about the assignment. And God said, because of the assignment, you will see it. You will not have the penal experience where you won't see the promise. He said, you're going to see, my God, that the promotion that comes to your house is not going to cause you too much pain because at the end result, you're going to see the promise. And God said to please understand, but the promotions are coming. The promotions in your home are coming. The promotions is coming a lot. Hear me? I want everyone under the sound of my voice. Please hear me. Hear me, please. I need everyone who is dealing with a diagnose. A diagnose. Timothy, I pray for Brittany. I pray. I pray for her. I pray for strength. I pray for a lower back. I pray for her ankles. I pray for her. Hear me, cry but cry with faith. I need everyone that has been misdiagnosed. I need you to put your emojis as an angry face. If you have been misdiagnosed, 2,300 people have a watch party. Hear me, if you have been misdiagnosed and you believe it is a misdiagnosed, your emoji is an angry face. If you have been misdiagnosed, there you go. Robo shana da basa, rakanda da beshiti asa, roko sobo shoto da basa, rakani asa da bosha. In the name of Jesus, God, the spirit of oneness right now is radiating right now. Roko na da basa, koro bosa. In the name of Jesus, shekana da basa. Every misdiagnosed God, I'm putting it on the altar. Kidney failure, I put you on the altar. COVID, I put you on the shop. I put you on the altar. You cancer, you Oh, you cannot dwell here. I put you on the altar. You miscarried. Let her receive. The seed, yet am I sure in the name of Jesus? Herniated dish, I got shy, and your rhythm, I got shoko shy, glaucoma, shed of a soko shy, a stroke, shed of a shy, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, rub a saka shy. I put you on the altar, hidden under my every disease that the enemy tries to attack your mind and your body with. I put you on the altar, shed of a saka shy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, shall the doctor say. It was nothing. I need these words, Lord God. We did not read it correctly. 
I need the verbiage, God. Hold on, Shop. I need the verbiage. Shed about shop. I need the verbiage. The verbiage shall be. Sometimes we pick up some things and it may not be that at all. I need the verbiage. I need the verbiage to be. We were wrong. I need the verbiage, God, as your servant. That as a doctor, we were wrong. We misdiagnosed. Sometimes the 3D don't pick it up right. Were you wearing deodorant at the time? I need these words, God. I don't go shout. I need these words. We were misdiagnosed. Sometimes we pick up things. I need a misdiagnosed God. I don't go shout. I need a misdiagnosed God. I mean, I need a misdiagnosed God. God even opened up the understanding in the minds of men and women around the world. I bind fear. They don't got shit. You got to walk it around in fear. We take everything that you say serious and we do what you say as doctors and physicians. We understand that. But the healer, I use my faith. When medicine stops working, because the doctor, you tell me to pray. And so I put prayer on it first before a diagnosis made. That about shit. I put my faith on it. I need the letter to come. We found nothing. I need everyone under the sound of my voice. I need miracles, God. That about sure. I need miracles. Shit about oh shot. I need miracle signs and wonders. I need miracle signs and wonders. Every fearful diagnose, I bind you up and put you under the blood. I wrote I release your spirit, God. El Shaddai. Everyone who is under the sound of my voice. Single women are praying for husbands. Single women are praying for husbands. Single women are praying for husbands. Single women are tired, God. I pray right now for the woman that I spoke to yesterday. 54 years old, never been married, don't have any children. God, single women are waiting for you. God, there is a woman right now under the sound of my voice that is angry saying, look in my life. I waited on God and now I cannot have a child because my eggs are no longer good. I cannot have a child because me waiting on God blew my chances of having a children. Let's be honest. I'm a woman of God. I'm a realist and I ain't being real. This is your prayer. How do I got shit? I'm going to die alone. I'm going to die unloved. I'm not going to have the wedding. I'm not going to have it. If you look at Pastor Jamila Gooden and you look at Apostle Fred Gooden, you see not just hope, see your future. We ain't in our house killing each other. We ain't cheating on each other. We ain't pulling knives out on each other. We have no desire for nothing but a happy, healthy marriage. See your hope. Because if God did it for me, baby, he could do it for you. Share and rings are still falling. God said, come out of the confines of your comfort zone and let yourself be found. Let them be found, God. Let them be found, God. Let them be found for God, the clarion call in the nation for the husband. It's time. God said the clarion call for the husband is time. You might not like what I'm saying, but he is not going to allow a certain community to wed and be happy and forget about the heterosexuals. It's not going to happen. God said, and he shall wed. The woman that desires a husband. He said it. He is not forgotten about. The woman that desires to be with. You might not like it, but everybody desires somebody. And God said, the clarion call for the husband shall be. Watch me. Watch me, God said. Watch me. Watch me. The clarion call is in the nation for the husband. And he said, the wind that he blows from every four corners of the earth 
is going to raise up the husband that wants to be wedded. Not the man that wants to play, but the husband that wants to be wedded. I pray, oh God, right now, Michelle, do it now. 21 days it took Daniel to be heard. 27, that means it shall be completed. Michelle, 27, do it now, please. And in fact, Michelle, I need you to put 27 up there for yourself for a misdiagnose, for a misdiagnose. I need you to also put 27 on there for the last name is Clark because the Lord just showed me her face. It says that, hear me. Please do it. It's three of them. It's one for myself. It's one for Clark. It's one for you. Please do this. I see names right now. And so I have to go in people's inbox after I get off of here. Hear me. I need you guys to understand. Emails going to come. Mm hmm hmm Iris, wait for my call. I want you guys to understand that everyone who is under the sound of my voice, you are asking God for a breakthrough with your finances. I need you to understand the land is tealed for it. The land is tealed for it. God says what this pandemic has done, it was a land tealing pandemic. God said that the reason why the land is sick, is sick for the nation, but he said it's right for me. It's sick to the nation, God said, but the land is right for me. When God tills the land, he breaks up the fallow ground. Hear about Gashim. Mm -hmm. Kathy Wright, hear me, Kathy. Cynthia Wright, hear me. Hear me. I pray for your strength during your divorce. I pray that God opens up your mindset and gives you the strength you need to stand before counsel. Anytime God breaks something up, he never breaks up anything unless building is the process. Hear me? He is not the God of confusion. He is a God of order. And to set up order, he sets up order where he breaks things down. Remember, yes, God. the Holy Spirit just told me to tell you his majesty is carpentry. His majesty is carpentry. And just like my husband being a carpenter, anytime you look at a project, you say it's not built right or we can make it better. But first we have to break it down. And God said, what I did in this nation, I had to break it down to rebuild it because the righteous are in need. I've got to break down this nation of unfairness to build it back up in my righteousness. I've got to break down this ground and it now has to be tilled right. It's got to be tilled right because the people need things. They need breakthroughs financially. They need better doctors and healthcare systems and reforms. They need to understand that I've got to even run them back into me because when the righteous run into me, I am their safety. And so he's tealing the ground in this nation. And you're going to see that this time, not next year, for some of you, you got five days left for a turnaround. But you're going to smile at every calamity and every hardship and every heartbreak. When God says, the wind is shifting for you. This land is tilled for us. This land is tilled for us. Breakthroughs are coming. Breakthroughs are coming. Breakthroughs are coming. Because the land 
has been tilled for your miracle. 